boys and girls, and welcome to the concession stand here on the KB Radio Network. I am your host, Kevin Reed, and this is the review of HBO's House of the Dragon, Season 2, Episode 4. I don't know the title of it, but it doesn't matter. Uh, if, if I would have put a soft title for this episode, it'll be All Hell has officially broken loose. We're coming off of the heels of episode three, where Rhaenyra snuck into King's Landing to have a one-on-one, a woman-to-woman, face-to-face conversation with Allison. And it ended very interesting because they both came to the realization that what Viserys was telling Allison in season one, at the end of season one, in his death, well, not the end of season one, but the end of his life, uh, it was a story. It wasn't about Aegon, his son. It was a story about Aegon the Conqueror. And they both came to that realization. And um, in this episode, we find the consequences, so to speak, of that conversation. You know, uh, Allison is searching for the story of ice and fire and uh trying to get clarification on what she heard even though deep down she believes Renera. because let's not forget yeah they're sworn enemies now but at one point they were basically sisters you know they they were joined at the hip you know they loved each other and still do have a form of respect for one another that's why she uh takes her at a word so to speak you know, but it's too far gone. <laughs> this is too far gone. And on Renera's side of defense, her absence from uh, Dragonstone is causing kind of a rip in her council. And it's, it's just back and forth with that. And this was an excellent episode. I enjoyed this episode a lot. This is probably one of the best of the new season of season two so far uh it's directed by alan taylor who directed many episodes of game of thrones so he knows this material he directed the first episode of this season and this one and you could tell you could tell that this was in the hands of somebody who uh, knows this this property this lore and uh, just runs with it. Now, that's not to say that nobody else is doing a good job. I, I really can't pinpoint any bad director on this show. But it's something about Alan Taylor uh, and his direction on this show. It is top-notch. Now, his filmography, that's a whole nother issue and a whole nother show that I'll discuss. But as of this, he's done uh, a good job. This is definitely one of the most intense episodes of the season if not of the first two seasons you know uh aside from the season finale when we saw that dragon battle that ended the life of uh Rhaenyra's son by the hands of uh Amon and so like it's just like in that scene it, it, <laughs> just like in that scene uh where we got a uh the death of that uh, uh I think it was uh Luke Lucas Lucaris, I can't think of his name. I, I I know it starts with an L. Uh, Amon is the monster once again, <laughs> and this was I'm gonna tell you. And I know I know I'm skipping to the end, which is breaking protocol. But it it's <laughs> I'm gonna touch in on the rest of the show. But the ending of this episode was so well crafted, so intense. I really can't think of any other way to describe it. I mean, you was at the edge of your seat the entire final, what, 10 minutes of this episode. It was just madness. We finally get the dragon battle that this show has been promising. It's the House of the Dragon. It's the Dance of the Dragons, as it's known in the books. And we finally get our first step in that direction. Uh, tonight's dragon battle was a memorable scene. I mean, a very memorable scene that's going to last throughout the rest of this show. 
but this was a bad episode. In not bad meaning bad, but bad meaning good uh, for King Aegon. Uh, this, I actually felt kind of bad for him at the end of this episode for some strange reason. And at the, it's funny. It's funny because I was taking notes and I was like, man, he is slowly drifting into Joffrey uh, territory, you know, from Game of Thrones. Uh, he's slowly drifting into that as this privileged, snobby little king that you just want to slap the sleep, you know, he the whining and nobody's listening to me and all this other, I, I can't, I can't stand, I can't stand. <laughs> but as the show progressed, and I'm just talking about this episode here, as the episode progressed, his character went through so much development, so to speak, not where he had an arc, not where he made this 180 switch or anything like that, but I kind of understood him, you know, I kind of felt for him because he was thrown into this. When you really sit down and think about it, he didn't ask for this. He didn't ask to be king. He didn't ask for all of this uh, uh, power. He was thrown into this in the middle of a family squabble, you know, and everybody knows, everybody knows that he's not the rightful heir to this throne. Yet he sits there and he's trying to be a king. We saw in episode one when he, he tried to be a good king. Like when the guy came to him about the goats, you know, oh, they took my goats and all this. Oh, we'll give you some more goats. And uh, Otto Hightower is like, no, we can't do that. <laughs> no, uh, those goats are to feed the dragons. We're going to need to feed the dragon. You're like, oh, but can't we give him some of the goats back? You know, he's, he's, he's trying to be a good king. Or a good man, you know, not really thinking long term or how one thing can affect the other and how it doesn't matter where you're a king or a president or a mayor or whatever the case may be. You can't please everybody. I don't care what law you pass, what ruling, you, what bill you sign. You're not going to satisfy everybody. And he he didn't understand that. He He just wanted to make everybody happy. He wanted everybody to like him. And once he realized that wasn't going to happen, that's when he turned into this snobbish figure that we got uh, uh, going right now, uh, at least for a little while longer <laughs> until the end of this episode. This uh, 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 In this little council meeting, we find out that Amon and Kristen Cole have been communicating with one another, which undermined Aegon. And you're like, how y'all... How you know where Kristen Cole is going? What is he doing? Why 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 are you doing and um not including me, I'm the king, you know? <laughs> He's like, I'm the king. Why why do not do I not know about all this? So uh uh Amon, they talk in I think Venarian and uh, uh he kinda undermines Aegon and it was just a demoralizing little situation for uh Aegon. Like I said, I felt bad. I felt bad for him. <laughs> and uh later on, while he's going to his chambers after he's just bored with the whole situation because nobody's listening to him at the council, he leaves. He goes to his room and he finds uh Allison in the room, uh searching the the, the cabinets and looking for books, you know, where the, so she asks, where's your father's books? Like, oh, I had him removed, you know. And so uh, he's, he, they're having a conversation, and she's asking him, you know, what's wrong? What's the problem? But she asks in a way which was so disrespectful. <laughs> She's like, what's the problem? You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like what now? What, what, what's the issue? You know, she doesn't care. And she really doesn't care about Aegon. And it, it, and it shows. It showed in episode two when... Everybody was mourning before the death of that child, which is Aegon's child. And he's crying. And she had walked in, and he was crying, and she just walked right back out. She didn't comfort him or nothing. I'm like, man, Allison, bro. <laughs> I mean, the dude need a shoulder here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it, so he's telling her, like, look, nobody's listening to me and all this here. And she, and she kind of undermines him. 
when she tells him the truth. If she does tell him the truth. Like you not you don't listen to me. You didn't listen to your grandsire. You didn't listen um um to anything we were saying. Uh, you know, all of the council, they've been here, they earned their spots there, they know what they're doing. You know, you who are you? <laughs> you know, what do you know? I mean, she was saying the truth. It was just the delivery, I guess you could say. And it was her bedside matter wasn't all that good. But speaking of bedside Going back to Allison. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but is Allison pregnant? Because uh, when she had the rocks that was by the fireplace, she put it in a towel and she put it on the stomach. And it was something that she was drinking that old boy, uh, uh, Lord Strong, uh, uh, the master of whispers, he looked at it and noticed that it was kind of weird that she's drinking this. And it's like, is she trying to give herself an abortion or something? I don't know what it is, but if she if she comes up pregnant, you know, that just blows all the wheels off. Now, this was before the end of this episode where there's more pressing issues, but that's still an issue. So I, I'm just curious. Or is she having her monthly uh, visit by Aunt Flo? I don't know. I don't, you know, I didn't live in those times. I don't know how that works. It, <laughs> but she was... It, it just seemed weird. It caught me off guard. Like they paid a little bit more attention to this details of what she was doing, you know, with the rocks, the hot rocks on her stomach and what she was drinking. And she was drinking a lot of wine with her son in that scene that we was just previously talking about and stuff like that. It's like, she's, uh, in, in the look, even her look and, um, um, the master of whispers pointed that out to her. Like, you look kind of, you know, a little off. And, <laughs> and she, she shoes it off, you know, and she's like, look, my husband died weeks ago. Uh, 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 my grandson, uh, whatever died and this, that, and the third, we're going to war. Yeah. I, of course I wouldn't look too good. And so that, yeah, all that made sense. All that, all that checks, but it was just weird that uh she was doing that I, I don't know my mind went to that but i would love to know your thoughts when we wrap up the show you can leave it in comments and whatnot but i, I would love to know uh what you think is going on there uh, but uh needless to say you know let's address the elephant in the room there's a lot that took place in this episode that is worth talking about but <laughs> I, my mind is so stuck on the final 10 minutes of this episode that I really can't focus on anything else. Yeah, I really can't. <laughs> uh, well, let's get to the setup. This is how it was set up. Now, Kristen Cole, who I can't stand, is official. I can't stand him. I mean, I'm borderline, borderline hatred there for Kristen Cole. Now, he devised this plan to go take uh, Rook, Rook something. And instead of going to where Damon is now, Damon, that's a whole nother subject that I'm not going to get to today, but that was a cool little part of the episode with him at that castle and he's being haunted to an effect. Uh, but, uh, Kristen Cole decides not to go that way. He's going the other way. Uh, he's going to take this castle. It's a small castle. So it's like, why, why even go there? But there's a reason. It, it was basically a trap. It was a setup to get a dragon there. Not just any dragon, but Rhaenyra. He wanted to lure Rhaenyra out of Dragonstone. And it almost worked. It almost worked. But Renice decided, look, send me. Don't you go. I'll go. And this, this <laughs> once, once she said that, I already knew. What was what was about to happen? It, it was it was already telegraphed at that moment. I was like, oh no, not release, please not release. <laughs> but the battle is happening, and uh, Renice shows up with her dragon, and Kristen Cole isn't phased by this at all. He sends a signal. Uh, he gets two uh, people to shoot off 
uh, flaming arrows. That was the signal. And just, just past the horizon there, we see Amon and his beast of a dragon just laying low, waiting for that signal. And he's about to take off, and he looks up, and he sees Aegon. Now, Aegon, he got drunk. Like I said, he's tired of being disrespected. I guess he wanted to earn respect. And so he suits up and hops on his dragon to come and join the fight. And so this throws off the plan. <laughs> this is a little monkey wrench into the plan, of course. Uh, once Amon saw Aegon, he went, he laid low. He was like, ah. Uh, He's an idiot. I don't know why he's here. It throws everything off. So whatever the case, uh, Aegon and Renice and their dragons have a dance in the sky. That was a beauty. I love this scene. I just love this scene. I love the battle. Uh, even with them going at it in the air, they're still affecting what's going on on the ground, uh, taking out those soldiers. Uh, it was just beautifully Beautifully choreographed and shot. Um, uh, uh, Renice has the upper hand, of course, because she has the experience. Uh, Aegon has zero battle experience, and you can tell. And this is where we saw Amon join the fight. Amon comes in. He uh, torches. Well, I'm going to put heavy quotations on this. He tries to torch Renice and her dragon, but instead hits Aegon and his and sends them into a fiery spiral straight down to the ground. And so then we get the battle between Renice and Amon, who are going at it like Brahma bulls in the sky. Of course, uh, Amon has the bigger, stronger dragon and eventually gets the upper hand. And basically, his dragon broke uh, Renice Dragon's neck. I mean, just bit through it and killed it. And we see that epic shot of Renice just accepting it, accepting her fate when the dragon falls out of the sky onto the castle, and uh, and that's that. Now, in film and television rule, it, this is a law, basically. If you don't see a body, assume they're not dead. I find that hard to believe with this particular case. <laughs> I don't think, I think Renice is dead. We didn't see the body. We didn't see the, we saw the impact, um, but we also saw her scrap herself onto that drag. So it's not like parachutes existed, airbags existed. I don't see that happen. But uh, we didn't see her actually die, and we didn't see her dead body. But let's just assume that this is the end. I, I don't think she's making it out of this. Uh, speaking of not making it out of it, the very last shot of this show, Kristen Cole is looking for the king. While uh, walking into the forest to find him, he sees Aegon. I'm sorry, a uh, Amon walking in and sheaving his sword. And that was the curious part for me. We didn't see him do nothing per se, but he, you know, why did he put his sword up? And as they walk closer, and uh, he asks a Amon, where's, where's the king? And they look over and they see a, uh, Aegon's body laying next to his dragon. And uh, Kristen Cole drops his helmet and like, oh my God. And the episode ends like that. And so we are, <laughs> we're in the thick of it now. It is truly, it is truly no point of return here. This is it. We are full on war. Uh, the king is down and out, I'm assuming. Uh, once again, they didn't really show where he died or how he died. Because I'm, I'm skeptical. I'm I'm thinking Amon one number one shot him out the air on purpose and killed him when he was on the ground. That's my thoughts. So <laughs> um let's not forget last episode uh Aegon embarrassed him, shamed him in that brothel. 
you know, that belittled him even. And so he has some disdain, and he always has some disdain for that because he wants to be king as well. And so there's there's that there. Uh, how is it going to be on in King's Landing, you know, when word gets back to Allison and everybody there? How is it going to be at Dragonstone when – uh, Rhaenyris finds out about this when when the Lord, uh, you know, Renice's husband finds out and all this here. It, it, it's going to it's this is pure madness. This is <laughs> this is pure madness. And I am so, so happy um, to experience this. I wasn't going to record this today. I wasn't. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll wait till tomorrow. Uh, but I forgot to mute on uh, X. <laughs> House of the Dragon. I normally mute it on Sundays, uh, just in case I don't watch it when it first drops uh, 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 live or however you want to say it uh, when it first premieres. And so uh, that'll give me an opportunity to watch it without being spoiled. And I didn't mute it today because I took this opportunity. Uh, my daughters, and I know this has nothing to do with House of the Dragon, but I want to explain something. I'm trying to make a point, people. My daughters are into Love Island on Peacock. And they got me into it. <laughs> I'm into it. And I was so excited for the new episode that came out uh, Sunday. I said, okay, I can sacrifice uh, House of the Dragon. It's only episode four. They're probably not going to do anything big until maybe next week or the week after in episode five or six. And so that was my thoughts. That was my thoughts. <laughs> because it comes on at the same time. And so after Love Island went off, and I went in the bag and I said, well, maybe I'll go watch House of the Dragon. And I said, nah, I'm not going to watch it. And um, go to lay down and my phone just was going nuts. It was going bananas with with. Oh, major death and all these. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. And so I had to hurry up, flip the phone over, and watch. <laughs> Turn on Max and watch it. Be, uh, I even told my wife, because she asked, are like, you going to watch House of the Dragon? No, nah, I ain't watching it tonight. I'll, I'll watch it tomorrow and do uh, a recap afterwards. And I, I, I was fully prepared to go to bed, but it didn't happen. <laughs> It, it didn't happen. I was like, well, I can't do that because I can't go throughout the day tomorrow and get spoiled. And I know I'm going to get spoiled, so I, I had to do it. And I'm so glad that I did. The, the only downside to that, I'm wide awake now. And so <laughs> I'm going to have to take something, I don't know, to go to sleep. <laughs> but I'm wide awake now. But it is it is a joy to... uh uh experience this show on Sunday nights. This is uh premiere viewing. I, it won't happen again. Uh, I will sacrifice uh, House of the Dragon no more. Uh, but I would like to know, what are your thoughts of episode four of House of the Dragon season two? I Look, man, I am so, so hyped up for the remaining episodes of this season. I think we have eight episodes in total so this was the mid-season finale i guess so we have four more episodes to go oh boy this is going to be an interesting month on <laughs> on sundays uh, but i would like to know what are your thoughts of not only this episode but of the season so far email the show kb radio podcast at gmail.com you can also Look up the KB Radio Network on all social media platforms, as well as YouTube. Subscribe to the KB Radio Network channel and like this video if you don't mind. Don't forget about the five stars, the reviews, and sharing this show. If you're listening to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you are currently listening to the concession stand here on the KB Radio Network network everybody thank you for joining me for this review of house of the dragon season two episode four entitled the red dragon and the gold can't wait to speak to you next week for episode five 
want you all to know that I love you, continue to love everyone, and until we speak again, you all be blessed.